supposed to be here if she hasn't made it. Dick Scouton uh, did come early. He unfortunately had three other events at the same time uh, to be at, but he did come and wants, wants his constituents to know that he's listening and very actively watching this. So I'll get started. My name is Janine Rustad, by the way, I'm with the City of Hillsboro. I'm the project manager for both South Hillsboro as well as the TV Highway Corridor study. So as I mentioned, uh, as you all were finding your way over here, this planning process has been going on for South Hillsboro for quite some time. I saw Joe Hanauer in the back, one of the property owners. He, he probably has been involved since the beginning. But really it started in earnest in the late 90s. There was some efforts to bring this area into either the urban growth boundary or the urban reserves. We consider uh, South Hillsboro, the area that you see the maps on today, phase two development. Phase one was the Witch Hazel uh, development off to the left, which is well underway in construction. 2006 is when we took another look. We had Area 69, which is along 209, brought into the urban growth boundary, and Area 71, which is right adjacent to Witch Hazel. Those areas were brought into the urban growth boundary, but it was very difficult for the city to get its services there. So we applied for and received a grant from Metro to look at this whole plan area on how we could create a complete community. So through 2000. 2008, there was this earnest uh, planning effort that culminated with the City Council and Planning Commission endorsing the South Hillsboro Community Plan. In 2009, we knew that out of that 2008 planning process, there were some big transportation issues left unanswered. So we applied for and we received a grant from the Oregon Department of Transportation to study not only this area of TV Highway, but it ended up we're studying TV Highway between Beaverton and Hillsboro to find the big solutions. What is TV Highway? If we've come to an agreement, it should maintain, be maintained as an arterial or a four lane. And now we're looking at the solutions, and that will be a May 8th open house, on how do we make this work. Uh, and then the regional process, 2011, the region adopted urban and rural reserves, and Metro did expand the urban growth boundary to include the remainder of the planning area. So back to the 2006-2008 outreach, there was extensive public outreach. Open houses, three open houses, there was, I had a, one of our planners, Dan, who's somewhere floating around, he pulled out the information that over 14,000 mailers had gone out during that two-year process. So this is building on that process. One thing we're doing, when Metro expanded the urban growth boundary, they had a condition that said we had to provide the capacity for up to a little more density. So these two alternatives we have out today that we're looking for your comments on are studying how we can accommodate a little more density. And looking at the comprehensive plan, it's very important for us as the city, and we hope that you all agree that we honor the work that was done and endorsed in 2008. And one of the, the three of those principles that we must honor is that this has to be a complete community. We need a range of housing, we need schools, we need parks, uh, and, and the activities, uh, shopping, your coffee shops, we need to be connected, and when we say connected, we're not just meaning this planning area, we look around us, we look to Reedville, we look to Aloha, and how do we interact as a community, and how do we all link together? And green, we need those parks, those open spaces, how do we take advantage of the corridors, both the BPA and the, uh, the wetland corridors? So again, at our alternatives, we're trying to stay true to the endorsed plan. The endorsed plan is in the center, and you can see that in that endorsed plan, the town center with a lot of the high density is along TV Highway in that town center, incorporating a neighborhood center in what we call the Butternut Creek property. And then the medium density really following a spine between Cornelius Pass Road and the BPA Power Quarter. We're concentrating the single family homes along the golf course and the outer edges. So alternative A, again, you see this repeating. We've shifted more of the medium density along area uh, 
71, which Hazel Village, which, interesting enough, enough, which Hazel Village has been developing a little denser than what we had expected. Alternative B studies, and again, please provide comments on all these, what's your preferred option. Some medium density along 209, thinking that we know we need to improve that information, or excuse me, that intersection at 209th and TV Highway, but with those improvements, 209th is also going to become a main travel corridor. Oh, actually, if you can go back, sorry. And alternative B, the other thing we're considering is a neighborhood center in that southwest corner, thinking that the areas to the west of that are urban reserves. And as this both South Hillsboro develops out over 20 years, this will not be built overnight, but as urban reserves develop, this is a good opportunity. It's flat, it's single ownership, that there is the potential for another little shopping node. Sorry about that, Molly. So how are we going to get there? Our target, I get this question a lot, when are we going to see the development? Our target for development ready is 2013-2014. We got a lot of work to get done and I keep telling people, see how much gray hair I have at the end of this. The first step is this comprehensive plan amendment. What we'll do, because we're targeting the comprehensive plan amendment for this summer. Now I know, we've heard it, we understand, we get it, that's why we applied for the grant. Transportation is a big issue. When we adopt the comprehensive plan, we're going to put an overlay on this area. So we will not allow any development until we get through first the TV Highway Corridor Study, which is slated to be completed this summer, and then after that, the TV Highway Focus Area Plan, which the Focus Area Plan are going to look for those specific solutions to TV high, or excuse me, to the South Hillsboro development. So how do we improve 209th, 229th? We're working very closely both through this project with the county, but also with the TV Highway Corridor study with the county. I see a few county people around here. I won't call them out by name, <laughs> as Mike Dahls from Sinks in the back. But we're working very closely to coordinate to make sure that this is an opportunity, as we like to say, that all boats rise. After this summer, we will also start a voluntary annexation outreach. We're not going to come take you in if you're in South Hillsboro, but if you're interested, and we've had people calling us saying they do have some interest. We have the two big property owners, the former St. Mary's site and then the Butternut Creek property, that they'll be filing an application for annexation, and we're looking to see if we can get a good critical mass that will join that annexation, and we're going to be exploring ways that we can offer incentives. So if you're interested in learning more, please fill out one of the blue comment cards and say you're interested. Uh, Doug Miller, who's here with city staff, is heading up our outreach, so we'll make sure we get you on the proper list. Then the next thing before we develop anything, after we address transportation issues and, and make sure we not only get the solutions from the TV Highway Corridor study, but that we also meet the state transportation planning rule. We, we don't get to have a free ride here, pun intended. Then we get into zoning. That we expect to have the zoning adopted in 2013. Of course, the, the question mark on the map is we need the final written order on urban, rural, at urban and rural reserves in order for the May scheduled hearing at the state to acknowledge, or as I like to say in the plain English, have the state bless this UG, or all UGB expansions. Important dates if you want to stay involved is we're hoping on April 11th to go to our planning commission with a proposed, uh, we're, from what we're hearing, we're foreseeing that there's going to be some hybrid of alternative A and alternative B. So bring that proposal to our planning commission, tell them what you've said to us, hear from them. Then on May 8th, there is a joint open house between TD Highway and South Hillsboro, and I understand now that a lower read bill will be there as well at the Beaverton International School. For TD Highway, that's when we're going to be rolling out our solutions package, this how do we make it work. And then again, summer of this, this summer, adopting the comprehensive plan amendment. And stay tuned with our website to see more dates for workshops and open houses. And I think that's all I have. I'm happy to take questions up here. And if I can have one of my staff help with writing down, make sure we're ready to do that. Okay. Um, the city does not like to forcefully come in and grab and take you in. So, again, we have the two big property owners. If, if we go to one of the maps, 
things that have to happen. Come talk to us. One of the things, and I've got two of my bosses here that can kick me. If you come in at the same time, we might be able to put you on the same application, which would save the annexation fee. Does that also mean that the company's passes up for changing where it's going through? As it's depicted on the map, that is what uh, the question was. Thank you. The question was, is there any change in how Cornelius Pass is going through? And as we have it pictured on the map, that's what we're envisioning. The city is going ahead, and we've started the talks with the railroad about trying to get a Cornelius Pass road extension. At the same time, we would extend Blanton and Alexander. And I like to point this out to people, because right now, if you imagine going north on 209, and then you're trying at that intersection to go west on TV Highway, you can sit there for a long time, especially during the rush hour. I've heard from TVFNR about the back of some of the fire station. So this would create an alternative route, have a signalized intersection where you make a left onto a Blanton extension, and then you can take Cornelius Pass. If you're going north to Jobs in North Hillsborough or going north to 26, you've got an easier path. No.
expect that process. We're actually participating. We're watching it, but we're not trying to override it. The question is, if we're going to fix the intersection at 209th and TV Highway, are we going to wide, widen 209th all the way from TV Highway to Farmington? Again, as part of the TV Highway study, we will determine what improvements are needed. They might not happen simultaneously. If it's determined that 209th needs to be widened, it'll happen as development occurs. Unless, one thing with Cornelius Pass Road for extension, for example, the extension, when we talk about getting that over Butternut Creek, that's going to be something that we're going to have to find funds to do. So, most of these development, or the road improvements will happen as development occurs. Some we might have to find outside money to help us with. Any other questions? Oh. question is, we envision a complete community. Wouldn't that include industrial area? Complete community, we're looking at the 2040 concepts. We look at South Hillsboro as one piece of the larger, not only city of Hillsboro, but the western Washington County. And one thing in working with some of our partners, we've learned that when you look at western Washington County, believe it or not, by 2015, or if there's no growth, no job increase because of the economy 2017, there's going to be a shortage of housing. So while we're looking at some jobs, maybe not industrial, there will be some jobs and we have the numbers available on the commercial space. Uh, we, we look at this holistically also as the city and the region. And the oh, gentleman in the back. Uh, 
raises a concern for a whole street improvement on 209. Hopefully it wouldn't be just a half street improvement on the South Hillsboro side because the whole, the whole, both sides of 209 need improving all the way up. We realize that it's something we'll grapple with, but we can only require the developer to do the half street unless I'm missing something, yeah. Yes, ma'am? Let's take a couple more. 
more questions, and then anybody with a name tag is available. I want to make sure everybody has the time. So I'll take yours and then yours. Yeah, the question is the one more step at the metro level. It's actually one and a half steps at the state level. The state verbally acknowledged, or what I like to say, you know, they blessed it. They said, yes, you did it right, the urban and rural reserves. So they gave their verbal order in August. We need a written order on that. And then with the Metro process, Metro expanded the urban growth boundary. Now the state needs to hold a hearing and determine whether or not that process was done correctly and hopefully we'll end up with acknowledgement in May. So those are the two steps we're waiting on. Uh, again, the hearings for the UGB is in May. I, I can get you the dates. I have your contact information. I don't remember offhand, but unless you were involved at the level below, you can go as an observer. And then, ma'am, you had a question.